Hi, I'm Jim Toll. I'm part of the Opto Group here at Vichet Semiconductor. And today we're going to talk about IR receivers and specifically the automatic gain control or AGC feature of our IR receivers. Now, if you've watched any of our videos, you know that Vichet is the world's leading supplier of IR receivers. And part of that reason is because of the AGC function. So today we're going to take a look at a tool that helps you visualize how that function works, but more importantly, how best to choose the AGC for your operating environment. So go to vichet.com, hover over products, and select IR receivers for remote control. Go to the design tools tab and scroll down the list and click on AGC Mapping Tool. So the mapping tool includes uh, different coding schemes. These are the different remote control codes that are sent from the remote to the IR receiver, for example, in your TV or your DVD player or your set-top box. There's a number of different interference sources, and these are optical interference for sources. Primarily, they're uh, fluorescent lights or uh, strongly modulated fluorescent lights, but there's also dimmed LC LCD displays. And, and in the past, not so much now, there were uh, plasma displays that actually uh, corrupted the remote control signal. And then finally, there is this AGC curve. And basically, it's, uh, it has on the x-axis axis the burst length in carrier cycles. And on the y-axis, it has the maximum envelope duty cycle. And we'll explain what those are first, and then we'll come back to this curve. When you press a button on your remote control, the infrared emitter found in the remote control unit is rapidly turned on and off, sending a burst of light to the receiver. It's comprised of a certain number of modulation cycles, for example, 10 cycles sent at 38 kilohertz, and that's T subburst in the diagram. The repetition time is the duration of the burst plus the gap time until the signal repeats. And we define the envelope duty cycle as the burst length divided by the repetition time. But most IR codes are not that simple. They look more like this. This is the Sony code. In order to distinguish between the zero and one bits, the burst length varies. It's a sequence of zeros and ones, which allows us couch potatoes to change channels or turn up the volume. Other codes vary the gap times or the order in which the burst and gap times are sent. Therefore, most data codes will show up in the envelope duty cycle diagram not as a single spot, but as an extended zone or region. And we'll see that when we look at the specific remote control codes uh, on the AGC mapping tool. So now let's go back to the actual mapping tool. And if we click on the Sony code, you can see that it shows up as an oval shape in the center of the graph. And that's because of the rather long burst durations of the Sony code. Any signal that is below the curve will be received by the IR receiver. And any signal that's outside of the curve or above the curve, if you will, uh, will be rejected or not seen by the IR receiver. And we show the three different or four different AGCs that we offer for the Sony code. And you can see that um, it would not be accepted by AGC3 or AGC4 because part of the code is not under those curves. Therefore, you would have to choose either the AGC1 or AGC2 if you use the Sony code. So let's clear that and let's look at RCMM, another remote control code. It has a very short burst cycle. 
Here you can see that only AGC-1 and AGC-3, which are designed for short burst codes, are compatible with the RCMM code. AGC-2 and AGC-4 are for longer burst patterns and can ex cannot accept bursts below 10 cycles. So let's assume that you are using the RCMM code. We know that an IR receiver with either AGC-1 or AGC-3, AGC-3 can be used. Uh, let's add some interference sources to see which might be better. Fluorescent light, for example, lies above the AGC, if we just typical fluorescent. It lies above the AGC-1 and AGC-3 line. So anything above the curve is suppressed by the IR receiver. So uh, if, uh, if you have fluorescent lighting, it's not AGC-1 or AGC-3 would be fine. Now, if we add strongly modulated fluorescent light, this will only be suppressed by AGC-3 and not by AGC-1. Adding dimmed LCD backlight, and the same holds true. The AGC-3 would be the better choice for blocking these potential interference sources. So the higher the AGC, the more protection there is from interference. The lower the AGC, the more versatile the IR receiver is in receiving a broad range of burst lengths.